Okay, so it's 2014 and I'm a civil engineering sophomore at the University of Maryland. I'm about to sit and learn the small classroom designated for my engineering for sustainability course, like I've been doing all semester. As usual, I'm expecting to dread what I'm about to learn because it's so technical that it goes over my head. <laughs> However, my professor shocks me this day. She proceeds to show us how the levee failures in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina were caused by poor technical design. Of course, I perked up because this was outside of her typical confusing technical lectures. But it was also because we all knew how devastating these levee failures were for poor black people in New Orleans. We all saw the pictures of the numerous houses submerged in water, only their roofs exposed, people on top of them, begging in the sweltering heat to be rescued. This was the first time that someone connected dots for me, that civil engineers, people in the profession I was studying to be in, have the power to cause such devastation for those most marginalized in our society. I immediately felt anger and sadness because I believed and still believe that everyone has the fundamental right to quality and safe infrastructure and that civil engineers are the ones responsible for making that happen. Fast forward to graduate school. I'm at the University of Virginia where I'm continuing to keep this belief in mind and apply it to my dissertation research on infrastructure inequality. I've been told by a few professors that highlighting infrastructure inequality isn't engineering and that infrastructure inequality isn't an environmental justice issue. I'm thinking to myself, my undergraduate professor made me see that there's something wrong in how we approach civil engineering design. But now, here are these other professors telling me that nothing needs to be fixed. Do they not recall the devastation caused by the levee failures in New Orleans? Do they not understand that large water infrastructure systems like those levees continue to cause disasters in the wake of climate change? Do they not know that during this time in climate change exacerbation, we need to be really concerned about our dams? Within the last three years, there have been back-to-back -back dam failures that have caused tragedies for communities downstream of them. For example, the Spencer Dam in Nebraska failed in 2019 because of intense rainfall and snowmelt, which led to the presumed death of one man as he was never found after floodwaters receded. His property was also swept away like it never existed. In 2020, the Edenville Dam in Michigan failed, caused another dam downstream of it to fail as well, and together they damaged 250 buildings and costed affected communities $200 million. Finally, there was a Lake Villa Vista Dam in Arkansas that failed just last year, which damaged bridges, left people to be water rescued from their vehicles and homes. These dam failure events do not have near the toll the levee breaches had on New Orleans, but why does it seem like we have to wait until one does to take preventive action? Communities are still financially burdened, broken up, erased, and traumatized because of the inaction to appropriately maintain these water infrastructure systems. We remember the pictures of Katrina and the communities, families, and homes that were ruptured when the levees failed. Imagine your community, your family, and your home. Do you know if you live near one of America's thousands of dams? What will be lost if it failed? Do you hope that the civil engineers who designed it not only constructed it correctly, but also considered the communities, families, and homes around it as they did? Thank you for listening and take care.